Assalamu alaikum fam, hope you're doing well. So I wanted to share some ideas with you about what I think a good man is. Now, this might be subject to change, I might add things or take things away. But at this moment, what do I think is an ideal man? As a husband, or just in general, right? I think an ideal man is someone who is steadfast and brave, who fears the law, feels accountable to a law, doesn't drink, doesn't use drugs, doesn't watch pornography, doesn't need to hit, but if he has to defend himself against a crazy woman, he will, right? And someone who feels a deep sense of protection for the innocence of children, and a man who is not afraid, when amongst other men, to say, I'm not going to participate in that. Who essentially is not as subjected to peer pressure and is willing to stand alone even if he faces mass ridicule. Also a man, I think in my eyes, would know how to fight, would know what has to be done to defer a criminal, right? A man, I think, is also someone who focuses on security of his home, how is the perimeter, how is his territory. Even a male lion or tiger, they scan their perimeter, they're constantly going around looking for intruders. So. In today's world, if your husband isn't checking the hinges of the door, installing extra locks, checking crime statistics in your area, or trying to move you to a better area, or getting you a security dog, or taking you to learn how to go to the shooting range, or you don't have a, a nice machete or something to deter a criminal, he should focus on that because more and more home invasions are happening in America. I saw one just the other day on the Houston news where two African-American men kicked down the door, well nearly kicked down the door of an older woman's home and they were very strong in kicking down the door almost and she didn't have a dog and she lived alone so we're seeing more and more of brazen attacks brazen attacks on the elderly and People scanning homes in order to detect their patterns, what time they leave, what time they come back, right? So a man, if he's going to go to work and have a housewife, he would need to have a very good security plan. And not relying on other men, such as police officers, to always be there to save his woman, right? He can't do it all, going to work, being the protector, being the father figure, being a leader in the community. Indeed, that's a lot of pressure. But I'd argue, for me, a good man would focus on that. So if he says, well, I don't like dogs regardless. Okay, but you're not going to be home. She needs someone. Oh, well, it's going to be safe. There's no problems. Why are you taking chances? That to me is a sign of weakness. So you hate dogs more than you care about the safety of your family. Oh, it can never happen. It can never happen. How do you know Allah won't test you that way? Right? Why are you purposely making your wife less safe and your children less safe, right? Criminals aren't going to be like, oh, well, you know, they're Muslim. I'm just going to pass on them. That's not how it works. So for me, a man would definitely focus on security and preparing his family, what to do in case of an emergency, right? Every door in the house needs to have its own separate lock, right? Meaning... The master bedroom, you can lock the door so that no one can open it, go to bed, have a knife or a gun, and your nightstand. Having th different tools in different rooms strategically, and strong doors, they're not these thin doors from China, but like a hardwood door that has very strong bolt hinges that can't be kicked in. Because in some of these invasion videos, you can see how they run, and then they, they try to drop kick the door so it busts real quick. And a smart man, a good man, is going to try to make his wife a little bit brave. Her peeing her panties and hiding in the closet while the kids scream in horror and a criminal gets more excited because he's getting adrenaline and getting more pumped up and probably is high on drugs is not smart. And just saying, oh, I'll pray to Allah. There's children dying all over the world. There's people in war zones, people in refugee camps, people getting killed every day. A smart person prepares for crime, a stupid person puts their head in the sand and says it'll never happen to me because I'm God's favorite. It's quite stupid.
quite stupid. If the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, got injured in war when he hurt his tooth, remember when he got slashed? What makes you think you won't get hurt? Right? So, a good man focuses on security, to put that in a nutshell. For me also, a good man is someone who would also like to go out in nature. Somebody who doesn't try to stay in an artificial, fake environment too much. Because they know they'll become softer. If you're always stuck in the office chasing paper and being a dog for your boss, disconnecting from the natural elements, which we will return to in case there's a hurricane or a tornado, earthquake, economic collapse, mass looting and rioting, you're going to need to know how to interact in nature again. So for me, a man who knows how to hunt, fish, who knows how to butcher down a deer, knows how to have basic cooking skills, right? Those are some very valuable skills more than having somebody who is in the computer realm or digital realm. Because that's all artificial and yeah, the future is digital, but at the same time, we'll always have the raw nature side. And empires rise and fall. And as countries do more cyber attacks on each other and the infrastructure becomes more digitized and more vulnerable and more liable to be held hostage, that means rioting and collapse can happen and the cities will be uh, very dangerous places to be that are unsustainable and depend entirely upon the electric grid. And industries that are prone to be manipulated with. Also, I would say, a good man takes care of his body. You can tell a lot about a man if he neglects his body. Because his righteous energy, his strength, his testosterone, he has a duty to his body, and if he's got a big squishy pot belly, no biceps, no triceps, he can't walk up the stairs without breathing really heavy. When you need him to defend you against a criminal, you're going to probably be, have to be the one, right? He's assuming that he'll just kick into action. But if that criminal is high on meth and has like meth muscles, it might be a kind of a niche example. But there are people who when they use meth, they become super shredded because they don't sleep. They barely eat and they're always awake. So they're constantly running around. They have a, like very thin muscles, but they are going to have a lot of stamina to attack your fat husband who is not gonna really have the muscle density or even the breathing cardio capacity to venture into the realm of combat against an intruder and like I said in America don't listen to the liberals who are telling you crime is fine everything is fine no it's not fine and it doesn't mean you live in paranoia but it means that you want to select a guy who, in the middle of the night, he's not going to be, you know, defecating on himself, begging you to hurry up and call 911. Instead, he's going to be the man to take charge. And you can call 911 and also have something in your hand ready in case they come for the children. Right? Bravery, courage, intelligence, basic survival skills, to me, that's a very ideal man. Right? Right? I understand a lot of women, they like the pretty boys who have those really strange, like almost flat beards that are like super like defined and I don't know, they almost seem like they're bisexual because of their energy. Like they spend a lot of time in the mirror shaping their eyebrows and some of them even wear makeup and like they bathe themselves in cologne. And like they got so much gel in their hair that if you poke it like gel flakes will fly off you know that's a different kind of man pretty boy right but for me specifically a rugged individual who's in tune with his raw masculinity that's cl closer to nature than city I think that's the more ideal man and I think that an ideal man is also someone who has stamina for intimacy multiple times a week, even multiple times a day, 
who has a good sperm count and cares about maintaining his sperm count. So that means not using drugs, eating right, having raw milk, eating beef heart, you know, keeping his diet healthy, not stuffing his face with fast food, chugging Coca-Cola, you know, submitting to the needs of pills and stuff like that. A good man resists intoxicants. I would also say a good man is resistant to the power of women, meaning even if he sees a woman who is more beautiful than you, he still is able to recognize the beauty but not overly stare right in front of you. And to also, he can have a sense of fear with certain powerful women like that because some of them are a trap and some of them, they do have STDs and not all STDs show themselves. So like if you have herpes, oh, God forbid, there's outbreaks and then it goes away in your area and your genitals and a man who is smart enough to know he should never not use a condom right he should always use a condom always be very careful of men who convince you if you're not Muslim yet or you're looking for a husband and he has a past right or even if, let's say, he's a virgin and he's a little naive. Always, you know, he's your partner, but at the same time, you have to be a little careful because you don't know if that person is willing to let a beautiful woman who has, you know, an STD and he goes raw dog with her, you're going to get a disease. So I think you want a man who, no matter how beautiful the woman is, if he was to cheat, God forbid, uh, would use a condom and be smart enough to use a condom because what's really dangerous is if you get a man who is always like oh I want to be no condom and then he cheats on you and does anal with another woman and she has hepatitis C or she has some horrible disease and that fecal matter gets inside of his area and then he goes home to you and has intimacy with you with no protection Honey, that's, oh, that's just horrible. And it's very common, unfortunately. So for me, a good man is very cognizant of using protection always. Also, I say a good man is somebody who recognizes the importance of scholarship, as in studying, not to the point where you neglect your body or your hygiene or stuff like that, but the point where he sees the respectability of you trying to elevate your mind. If there's someone who degrades it and sees it as nothing or not necessary, I'd say this person is probably going to have very boring conversations. They're going to have very short conversations, very concise conversations, and you're not going to be stimulated mentally. And women, we do like to talk. So a good man can have a good, interesting conversation, right? And about a number of topics and be open to hear yours and not just stare at you waiting for you to shut up, right? A man who has conversations with you and you notice that you're like two minutes in and he starts like looking away or looking at his phone and you're like, and it makes you feel bad because if you're not having intimacy and you can't even talk to the person, it's like you're living with a roommate and it becomes desperately lonely and opens you up. For somebody who will make you feel more alive because they'll be able to have conversations with you because they might be generally interested in your mind indeed you can find topics that he wants to talk about and you want to talk about but at least having a man I'd argue who is willing to have interesting thought-provoking conversations uh, big reason why I, I think it's the women who marry moms who they're lucky you know they're blessed by Allah. I hope they talk about religious stuff with them because they're a fountain of knowledge. <laughs> so those are some basic points about what I think an ideal man is. The dream guy, I guess you could say. And I'd also argue another good man is one who wants children. Who's not like, oh, are you going to get an abortion? Or can you take the plan B? Plan B is a pill by Planned Parenthood that closes... I think it's your fallopian tube so that the sperm can't get in. I'm forgetting the process of it. But 
it's the day after pill, they call it. So if the guy's like, do you have a day after pill? Do you have a day after pill? That's definitely not somebody who I think is a good guy because he's so focused on you not getting pregnant, right? It's kind of a warning sign. It's like, ouch. So, also I think a good guy is someone who knows how to fix things. It is extremely frustrating if a guy only knows how to look nice in the mirror. He can't mow the lawn. He doesn't know how to trim trees. He doesn't know how to fix the sprinkler system. He can't fix the toilet. He can't fix the shower. He can't fix the car. He can't uh, install an air conditioner. He can't do anything electrical. He just has like no handyman skills. He's literally just, I don't know, a walking ATM in the sense of goes to work, comes home, has average intercourse with you, doesn't talk to you and watches TV. That's pretty lonely. So for me, a good man is somebody who knows how to fix things or at least tries and then it's like okay if I can't fix it let's call a repairman but a man who knows how to survive can protect you likes children lowers his gaze uses protection avoids women who will tempt him or at least recognizes that if he was to be tempted god forbid he would use protection and wouldn't be uh, easily controlled by a pair of you know double D breasts and would be able to protect you from an intruder and know how to use the tool and who doesn't get afraid very easy but isn't reckless right you don't want a, a violent thug who you know pops off for any reason no a stoic controlled righteous Muslim man who fears Allah and contemplates justice for me those are what make an ideal man and also knowing how to cook in terms of not just butchering and hunting and fishing but with basic things right so let's say he has a special meal he likes to make and you're like hey you wanna I cook six days a week do you wanna have you know stir fry night or something like that I knew some you know men who were really good at making some traditional food from their area which that's actually pretty cool because they learned that cooking technique and then they can show you it doesn't mean they're gonna be like put on the apron and cook for you every night but once in a while have something like cool that they can show you that they have of their culture right so to me that's what makes a man it isn't the type of car and to be honest to me if a guy if I had a bunch of chickens right and he doesn't want to get near the chickens and he's like gross I want to go inside my nice BMW and I want to take selfies and I want to put on my Old Spice deodorant a bunch of times and like spray myself an Axe cologne and gel my hair and have like lines here and I got my Apple Watch and he doesn't want to get his fingers dirty around animals is a big no 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 because a man who like I said he can get his hands in the sand he can get his hands in the dirt he can withstand the snow that is more like closer to the masculine raw energy I'd argue the more city you become as a man the more feminine you become I'd argue and you're just a man based upon your suit how it fits and how tight you put that tie around your neck which is like a noose to your boss pull you by your freaking tie and be like get in the office and make money you know to me that's not really manhood I'd rather have a basically a country boy in my opinion or a jungle boy or a desert boy or a snowy mountain boy is much more preferable than a sheltered city boy who's only ever known the digital realm and has never been outside his comfort zone right at least you know and a bonus would be a very nice beard <laughs> so yeah that's what I would uh, call my ideal version of a man. I could add more things, but uh, then it might sound kind of selfish, right? But to me, that's what makes a m man in the terms of one I would like want to marry. And then I know the big glaring question is, you want to marry an imam and very few imams are like that. This is true, but an imam sheikh is an exception because they are unique in and of themselves. Uh, they're not just they're 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 not just your regular shmo Joe Schmo. Those are like 
top tier, you know, top shelf, in my opinion. So, whoever marries them, who Allah's had some, well, I'll bless that woman, right? But the other ones are just as fine, right? So, that's one question answered.